Okay, this is attempt number... I don't even know anymore. Of attempting to record Metroid Prime. I've been having way more technical difficulties than any person ever should trying to do something like this. But... Uh, I don't even know where to start. Okay, first of all, I'm kind of sick. And by kind of, I mean yesterday I was, like, practically dying. Today I'm better, though. Uh, one of my brothers took both of my GameCube controllers, so I had to go out and buy a new one so I could actually record this thing, assuming that it was going to work without a problem. Then, uh, I don't know, just trying to actually record anything with this Dazzle is proving to be way more annoying than anyone would have guessed. <clears throat> For one thing, it only records audio from the left side because I don't have like a red input on the TV. So that was okay. I figured I could work around that somehow. Then we had I did like a million tests and um, I don't even remember anymore. It's all one big blur of failure. My most recent test was recording using this, like, DVD recorder program that didn't work for some reason. Because it worked before, but now all of a sudden it decided that it was going to make my 11 minutes into about five and a half. So I figure, all right, that's not so bad. I mean, I can just put it into Windows Movie Maker and stuff, and then, like, slow it down so that it takes up twice as much time, and it'll line up perfectly. But it doesn't line up perfectly, because it's not really a perfect half-speed sort of, or, like, double-speed recording. It just sort of lags as it wishes. So that was no go. So now I'm trying to record with Camtasia. And previous attempts with this program have proved that trying to actually record game audio with this thing is impossible for some reason. So I'm just sort of recording it, like hoping my microphone picks up the TV. And not the annoying clicks and clacks of my controller, because my controller, the new one that I bought, the A button is really squeaky. I'm hoping that I'll be able to like trade it back for my real controller like on the weekend when I actually have a chance to do that alright so yeah here in this segment um, I'm just trying to get through the whole sort of space pirate base thing which shouldn't be a problem in an original test of this probably one of like three um, it was a very close call but that was because I didn't skip the cutscene at the beginning, and then I decided that there was no reason to show that, because I'm going to be skipping, like, half the game in this run anyway. So if you're not familiar with Metroid Prime already, this probably isn't going to be for you. I'd love to tell you to watch it anyway, but I'm not going to lie, it's going to be very confusing and hard to follow. You have to be pretty familiar with the game. Okay, so Parasite Queen, easiest boss ever. You scan it to get a lock onto its head, then you just keep alternating the A and Y buttons to shoot missiles at it quickly, and it'll die within seconds. <laughs> Hate that song. So now here's the exciting escape sequence. Which, of course, is no challenge. Even to most people playing this the first time, it's no challenge. Because they give you a very ample amount of time to do it. Probably didn't need to do that. I didn't feel like shooting that thing, though. I'm getting stuck on killing stuff. Okay, now we get to roll down a hallway. Or like a ventilation shaft.
Oh, and I also guess it's never really been <coughs> explained well enough at this point. Uh, this is a 23% run of the game. This first section isn't going to show that at all because it's sort of like like mandatory you have to do all this. But um, that means I'm only be going to be collecting 23% of the items in the game. Which mean, and 12 of those are artifacts. So, that's really only 11. Except it's actually 12 for reasons that I'll explain later. But anyway, that means I'm not going to be getting any energy tanks. I'm only going to have a total of 5 missiles. And I'm going to be missing items that most people would consider necessary for beating the game. Like the charge beam and the spider ball, and other basic necessities like that. Because using a massive amount of glitches, it is possible to skip these items. And it's not going to be easy. However, I have done this kind of run twice before. And it is possible to get a 22% game, where you skip the boost ball. But the boost ball is the hardest item to skip. I'm probably going to be showing how to skip the boost ball, but I, like, won't actually be doing it, because I can't do most of the sections. I'll just say, like, okay, so here's, like, if you didn't suck at this part, here's what you'd do. And then I'd try it, and I'd die, and then I'd restart it. <coughs> or something like that. So, yeah, scene with Ridley. Then here's the first and only time that I'll be using the grapple beam in the entire game. Grapple Beam's probably one of the easiest items to skip. I can't really think of any points where you really need it. Except for maybe the Magma Pool in Chozo Ruins, which is an optional room anyway. Because it just leads to some expansions. And this is the plot device where I lose most of my upgrades. Because they've, they've always got to have one of those. And also, um, if this game takes place after the original Metroid, I don't get why you aren't why you don't have the ice beam. Maybe even the screw attack. But whatever. There's depressurizing. I wonder how if there's fire in here. If there was like no oxygen in there or something. I think that's what depressurizing means. Okay. So I've got about three minutes left. I'm going to take advantage of that time to get the first item item of the game. <coughs> Sorry. Um, if you're familiar with sequence breaking in this game, you already know what that item is. If you're not, then prepare to be like astounded by how stupid this is. After this cutscene ends, yes, I see you, Ridley. Ridley really is way too big for Brawl in these games. In the 2D ones, he's not quite as big. But whatever, I'm not going to talk about that again. Okay, landing on Talon 4. Do I want to save? No, not really. Okay, this trick can only be done in the original North American release of the game. It is possible to do it another way, if you have the PAL or Player's Choice version, but I'm going to be doing it the easy way. You stand on the corner of the ship, lock onto this thing with the scan visor, and then you have to do a scan jump to the right, which basically means you press B and, like, the right, then, like, to get sort of this dash going on. Let me show you, like, that. Then you let go of L after you start the dash, and it lets you fly off in a direct, like, keep going in that direction for a longer distance. So by abusing that trick, like, after I actually do it successfully, it usually takes me a few tries. And especially with this controller, because it's a little bit different than the ones I'm used to. There is a ledge that you can land on, and immediately get the space jump boots, which is very helpful for further sequence breaking in the game, and also to speed things up, and just to make life easier in general. And I really hope I can get this thing with, before my time runs out because it really shouldn't be that hard. But for some reason, I suck at it today.
Oh, come on, that one should have made it. Come on, I gotta make this before our time runs out. Damn it. I'm, like, glancing over at my time. I'm not gonna make it. Oh, man, I thought this was gonna be easy. Okay, I guess it's not. I'll give it one more try, and then that's it. Nope. Okay, so next time I'll actually be doing that. Since I apparently suck too much to get it now. So, see you next time. I hope that you enjoy this run. A lot more than I am enjoying the recording process of it.